So here's an hypothesis testing example. An economist claims that the mean weekly income of man in a particular industry is 72 pounds 40. Okay, so we we'll already see there's a claim, well most likely we're going to test this. A, and let's only look at A now for now, a sample of 15 male workers, so we have a sample size, pretty small, gives a sample mean of 73.20, so here's a sample mean. And the sample standard deviation of 250, so that is a value of S, 250. Use this information to test the economist's claim at the 5% level of significance. As part of your answer, specify any assumptions you need to make in order to conduct the test. So, let's move along with this test. First, we always want to state the hypothesis. So here, we're having, let's actually say, so weekly income, let's call that a random variable x. Okay. And we're having a population mean for this, which we call mu, and we don't know what it is. Therefore, someone can make a claim. Someone makes a claim that this is 7240. So what about the alternative hypothesis? There's no indication that we are worried about deviations from this in a particular direction. So therefore, we test a two-sided hypothesis. All right. Next, we need to know what test statistic we're using. We're testing a population mean, so it's either set or t-test statistic. We're using set test statistics if we know the population variance, but we don't know that here. There's no information given on that, but we have a sample standard deviation. So we will have to use the sample standard deviation to estimate the population standard deviation. In this case, we're always using a t-test. And how is that t-test calculated? It's x bar minus the hypothesized mean divided by s divided by square root n, the sample size. So we have the x bar, we have the mu from the null hypothesis, we have the sample standard deviation s and we know the sample size 35. So we can calculate that. Before we calculate, whenever you do a test, you've got your hypothesis, you've got your test statistic, you need to figure out how is that test statistic distributed? Because only if you know its distribution under the null hypothesis, so in this case, if the population, population mean is indeed 72 pounds 40, only then can you use your calculated sample test statistic to say something about the sample. So, how is that here? Do we know what that distribution is? We're having a pretty small sample site, 15 workers, so that's most likely not enough to confidently say that a central limit theorem will kick in. In that case, the only way how we can claim that we know this distribution, and in fact that this distribution is a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, is if we assume and we have to do so because that information is not in the question, that x is normally distributed. Okay. If x, our weekly income, is indeed normally distributed and we have a sample of 15 and have to estimate the population variance of our sample variance, then that t statistic is t distributed with n minus 1 decrease of freedom. If you do not make that assumption, you don't know how this test statistic is distributed under the null hypothesis and you can stop your hypothesis test there. You will not be able to do it. So with that assumption, which we had to clearly state, we can move on. So let's calculate our sample test statistic, t is equal to 73.20 minus 7240 divided by the sample standard deviation which is 2.5 divided by the square root of the sample size which is 15. So when you calculate that what you will get is 1.239. Right, so that is the size of our sample test. 
Now we need to figure out whether we should uh, reject or not reject the uh, null hypothesis with that information. We can write down a decision rule. So let's write down a decision rule. Let's first sketch actually. So let's do a little sketch of a t-distribution. looks very similar to a normal distribution. We have 5% uh, level of significance. So what we need to find out whether for the t-distribution, so this is a t-distribution with n minus 1, so with 14 degrees of freedom, we need to find out which critical values cut off if added up together 5% of the distribution on either side. So that would be 2.5% on in each tail. So we go with that to information to our trusted T table. 14, so we're looking here, we are having a distribution of 14 degrees of freedom and a two-tailed test at 5% the critical value is 2.145. That's here. Yeah. Okay. Here it goes, 2.145. So we know that this is negative 2.145 and this is positive 2.145. So we will reject H0 if our test statistic falls on the outside in the rejection region. So we already know what our T statistic is, 1.239. That is somewhere here, 1.239. So it is not in the rejection region and therefore we do not reject H0. Now, can we actually calculate? So we know, because we came to this conclusion, we know that the p-value is larger than 5%. So otherwise we would have to reject H0. With our test statistic 1.239, can we say anything more about the p-value? Well, you can either calculate it precisely from Excel. If we look at the table, you can see 1.239 is actually smaller than this value here, 1.345. So the test statistic is sort of to the left here. 1.345, our p-value would be 0.2. So what we know is from the table that the p-value for our test is larger than 0.2. And that's, of course, we knew immediately it had to be larger than 5%. Now we know it's larger than 20%. So there is a fair probability that if the null hypothesis is true, we would get a sample mean in a sample of 15 that is located here or further out, or on the other side, the same distance or further out. So it's a very fair probability, in fact, larger, that probability is larger than 20%. So this was A, let's do a little shift of color and let's talk about B. So what do we know here? Now suppose, that the population mean income of male workers is known to be 72.4 pounds a week. A sample of 20 female workers, so again we have a sample size here, in this industry gives a mean income of 69.3, so that is our sample mean, 69.3, and a sample standard deviation of 3, so this is our S. Test the hypothesis that the mean income of women is the same as that of men against the alternative that women have a lower mean income. Use a 1%, here's our alpha significance level for this test. So, let's see. H0 here and HA. So now we are testing against the alternative that women have a lower mean income. So we know that in the alternative hypothesis we're having a left tail test because we're testing that the women's mean income, which we now well, we call it mu as well, but now we're talking about weekly income of women, 
is smaller than 72.4 and that means that our null hypothesis is larger or equal to 74 or sometimes we just write equal. So we are having an alpha of 1%. So let's make the same thinking over here. Do we need a t-test or a set test? Well, again, we don't know what the population, what the population variance is. Therefore, we have to use a t-test statistic. So again, the t-test statistics x bar minus mu divided by s over square root n. How is that distributed? Well, same argument as here. We don't have any other information. We are not being told that the distribution of weekly female incomes is normal. We don't know about the distribution. We don't have sigma. We have a pretty small sample size, n equals 20. So again, to come to the conclusion that this is so small sample size means no central limit theorem can be applied confidently. So we really are thinking about small sample distribution here, the t distribution, but only if we assume that x is normally distributed. So here the x representing the weekly incomes of female workers. So once we once we know that. We can actually write down, let's write down the decision rule explicitly. We can say reject H0 if your t test statistic is, and now let's again look at a little sketch. Here's our t distribution, it's exactly the same as before. A t distribution with 14 degrees of sorry with 19 degrees of freedom so it's actually slightly different because we have a sample size of 20 anyway that is also centered around zero now we're having a left tail test so we are only rejecting if our x bar is sufficiently smaller than the mu that means we are thinking about negative t-tests. So we are only rejecting somewhere here on the left. Okay, that's the only rejection region. And at what value? Well, we are using an alpha of 1%. So we are looking at that value in the t-distribution that cuts off alpha 1%. So let's go to our t-table. 19 degrees of freedom so we're, we're talking uh, here 19 degrees of freedom then we want a one tail test so we're looking up here and one percent that value is 2.539 so since we're having a symmetric distribution 2.539 would cut off one percent in the right hand tail we're not interested in that but you're interested in negative 2.5 so that's our critical value here. So we reject H0 if T is smaller than negative 2.539. Now let's calculate our T test. T is equal to, so what do we have? A sample mean of 69.3 minus the hypothesized population mean 72.40 divided by the sample standard deviation, which is 3, divided by square root 20, which is the sample size. So if we calculate that, we get negative 4.621. Where is that value? So that green value here, where is that? Well, it's somewhere very far in the tail here. Let's say it's here. What we can certainly see is that the area that is cut off by that is smaller than the area cut off to the left of negative 2.39. That means that the p-value is certainly smaller, I already say that, the p-value is smaller than 1%. And that's already enough for you to tell you that we should reject the null hypothesis. 
Okay, the value is in the rejection. The sample test statistic is in the rejection region, which is here to the left. And therefore, we also know that the p-value is smaller than 1%. So we certainly reject H0. We have found sufficient evidence to say that the null hypothesis that female average wages, weekly wages, are the same as male average weekly wages should be rejected.